Hello, my name is David A. Wheeler, and I'm here today to talk about formalizing the Geometric Proof Schwabhauser 4.6 and the Metamath Proof Explorer. This presentation demonstrates how to formalize a specific geometry proof in the Metamath Proof Explorer, MPE. It's all based on a particular book, uh, you can see the German title here, by Wolfram Schwabhauser, Wanda Schmelev, and Alfred Tarski back in 1983. Uh, in this book it presents a geometry system using axioms originally developed by Alfred Tarski. It's a very simple and powerful system. It's based on simply points, betweenness, and congruence. The Metamath Proof Explorer MPE is also known as set.mm. It formalizes mathematics using classical logic and ZFC set theory, which are widely used bases for formalizing mathematics. Uh, MPE sh rigorously shows every step using only axioms and previously proved statements. There are five independently implemented verifiers that routinely check that every MPE proof is correct. So this is an incredibly rigorous, I would say the most rigorously verified set of proofs today. It includes a section on elementary geometry based on Schwabhauser. This presentation focuses on a particular theorem, Schwabhauser Theorem 4.6, as formalized by Terry Arno in MPE Theorem TGBT at BTWN XFR. We'll recreate this formalization using the MMJ2 tool as a demonstration of how to create geometry-based proofs in MPE. So what are we trying to prove? Well, the original statement of what we're trying to prove is B, A, B, C, and A, B, C congruent A prime, B prime, C prime implies B, A prime, B prime, C prime, where the expression B, A, B, C simply means point B is between points A and C. Uh, in the list in parentheses is a sequence of points, and the triple bar means shape congruence. And basically, this statement extends betweenness to a new set of points based on congruence with another set of points. In MPE, we will name this theorem TG BTWN XFR, and this name simply means Tarski geometry between transfer. So, how do we convert this to Metamath? Well, first of all, we'll generally show the ASCII form in this presentation because that's what's editable. MPE conventions usually use a class for each point, which is going to be represented by an uppercase letter. MPE conventions don't normally use primes and class names, so we'll turn A prime, B prime, C prime into DEF. MPE prefers deduction form, and in deduction form, the hypotheses and conclusion are all of a particular form, either phi implies some statement or a definition such as p equals something. The geometry section uses extensible structures, structures for greater flexibility. In MPE, geometry proofs use common boilerplate hypotheses as they're needed. Uh, in particular, you'll see this over and over again. pH implies G exists in Tarski G, which simply says that G is a Tarski geometry. And over on the right, you can see what it looks like when it's typeset. P equals base of G. That simply says that the set of points is the base type of uh, G. And then we have operator dot minus, which returns a distance. I returns an interval. And dot tilde is the congru congruence relationship. For every point A, B, C, D, E, and F, we're going to have to declare that's a point. So for example, to say B is a point, we would end up saying phi implies that B exists in P. Now let's talk about translating the original statement into MPE. The original statement, if you remember, was BABC and shape ABC congruent A prime B prime C prime implies that B prime is between A prime and C prime. So we'll convert the left hand side into two separate MPE hypotheses. One will say phi implies that B exists in AIC, in other words that B is on the interval AC. And the second is phi implies that ABC congruent with DEF. 
Well, we'll convert the right-hand side into this MPE conclusion. Phi implies E exists in DIF, which is just another way to say E is on the interval DF. Now, of course, we have to prove these claims. We'll start by looking at the informal proof originally provided by Schwabhauser. Here's the original proof. I'm not going to try to read the original German, uh, but here's a translation of it into English. Uh, the proof here simply says let B double prime be some point. <coughs> uh, with that particular property, according to theorem 4.5, by a prerequisite, then those two are congruent, and therefore uh, the sets A prime, B double prime, C prime, D B double prime, uh, along with a prime b, b double prime c prime b prime have a particular relationship and then according to theorem 4.2 uh, they have these properties and then according to another theorem which is actually an axiom sorry a3 uh, we end up with finally our statement to be proved so what we're going to do first is look at the informal proof and find the parts that match or map to MPE. So for example, it mentions that we're going to use something called 4.5. Schwabhauser 4.5 is already proved. In MPE, it's this particular theorem, TG, CGR, XFR. Um, it also says that by prerequisite, then certain things are congruent and therefore uh, they meet this particular uh, relation I, called IFS. Um, Schwabhauser defines IFS in page 34. MPE doesn't directly define IFS, and simple, instead we'll just simply expand it and use parts of those expansions we need it. Uh, Schwabhauser uses uh, Schwabhauser 4.2 that has another MPE equivalent, TGIF SCGR, which is inner five segment congruence. And then it refers to axiom A3 and it has that MPE mapping right there. And therefore, in the conclusion, we're going to conclude that therefore B, A prime, B prime, C prime. Now, to do that, we're going to probably need to use a couple things. One is uh, MPE is something called EQELTRRD, and that simply lets us uh, assert that if A equals B and A is a member of C, then B must be a member of C. Uh, really commonly used little tool. Another tool that's often used for geometry is R19.29A. It's really useful when we're producing a proof for some witness values required. So, once we've identified the matching parts, we should get a basic understanding of what we're going to be depending on. So, here are the three theorems, or in one case an axiom, of what we're going to be depending on. Here's their original statements. I'm not going to walk through these in detail, uh, but uh, they're fairly straightforward, and please feel free to pause and puzzle through them if you'd like. So let's use MMJ2 and enter its hypotheses. Uh, from here on, when we have yellow boxes, I'm just going to simply read the yellow box text. I've worked hard to make sure the yellow box text is really what I want to say. So we'll use the tool MMJ2. This tool has some basic automation, which we'll simply use and not comment on. Here we enter our hypotheses, including typical statements in a geometry problem, asserting that the points we'll use are points, and finally our two main hypotheses of congruence and betweenness. We'll assign LOC underscore after equals CGR3TR, because otherwise MMJ2 will notice it already has this proof, and we'll just use it. Then we're going to add the conclusion. Uh, that has to have the step name QED. And then we're going to add the first proof step that was already mentioned. Uh, in the informal proof, mentioned we were going to need to use something, and it has an MPE equivalent, TGCGRXFR. So we'll just add a step, say we're going to use it, and then we'll use Control u to unify it. The MMJ tool identified many working variables. The good news is that we already know many of their values. The original informal proof told us to use Schwabhauser 4.5, our step 900, and that ABC was congruent with D something F, 
and that the new point will be on the interval DIF. So we can modify the end of step 900 to match the informal proof. There's a quantifier here, so we must use a set variable instead of a class variable for the original variable B double prime. This is indicating MMJ2 because it shows an ampersand S for set variable instead of an ampersand C class variable. So let's use set variable E for the working set variable ampersand S1, since we'll eventually prove that this is point capital E. We're using a single geometric space G, so by MPE geometry conventions it's very very likely that ampersand C8 is G, ampersand C5 is P, ampersand C10 is dot dash, ampersand C9 is I, and ampersand C6 is dot tilde. They follow the usual conventions. So let's assign those. We'll, we'll need to repeatedly do this. Ampersand W1 might be pH. However, that's not always true, so it's unwise to do that substitution so soon. We're going to leave that alone for now. Press Control U. This looks promising. After the substitutions, we see that TG, CGR, XFR in step 900 will work if we can prove that AC is congruent to DF. That's this new statement D12. Since ABC is congruent with DEF, we're confident we'll be able to do that. So we can work on that later. But how do we connect step 900 to the final step, QED? If you've seen other geometry proofs, you'll notice a pattern. We have something of the form pH implies there exists an E, where E is a member of A and some CH, and then we want to prove something in the form pH implies CH. In this situation, assertion R19.29a is really useful. So let's try that assertion and also refer to step 900 as one of the steps to use by using QED colon 900 colon R19.29a. So wait a minute, what's this about R19.29a? All right, this is what R19.29a actually is. It's these two hypotheses, and if you can prove those two hypotheses, then you can prove this conclusion. Uh, theorem R19.29a is commonly used in the geometry set. Um, it, when it is, class A is often the set of points P, and the set variable x is often some point that you can show exists. Maybe it's hypothesis, maybe it's something you can prove exists. And so this theorem lets you use the existence of x, for example some point, as an intermediate construction to prove something else, chi. So after using R19.29a, let's move up its hypothesis and note some other steps that we need. Here's our new result. This created a new step, D13. Note that we're only showing key lines. We're not going to show every line as that may be too confusing and we make the font too small. Let's clean things up a bit. We'll move some white space, move step D13 before D12. It's not clear exactly how we can complete this new hypothesis D13. So let's add another step we know we're going to need eventually. AXT GC GR ID. That's the axiom of identity of congruence. Remember, Schwabhauser specifically noted it. We know we need it. That may help us out. We'll number step 800 arbitrarily. Let's see what that looks like. Here's our new version. When we step, press Control U, we'll see that ampersand C1 equals base prime ampersand C2. And we're in a single geometric space, so by convention, that's really just going to become P is equal to the base of G. And similar for dist, ITV, Tarski G, that's, that will help simplify things. We'll only need to change a working variable once. MMJ2 will automatically replace all other instances. Then we'll press Control U again. Here's our new state. According to the informal proof, according to A3, B double prime equals B prime. We've already noticed that Schwabhauser A3 is MPE AX TG CRID, the axiom of identity of congruence. We already chose to represent B double prime as set variable E and B single prime as E, so let's plug those in so that the result of step 800, our application, 
becomes little e equals big E. Then press Control U. Here's our new state. It's only a little changed. We need to provide some more information. According to the informal proof, we can use 4.2. And since Schwabhauser 4.2 is MPE TG IFS CGR, inner five segment congruence, let's add this line just above step D21. Okay. Then we'll press Control U. We'll, use, we'll, the, we'll again use our usual geometric conventions, do form your substitutions, press Control U again. Here's our new state. The original informal proof said that we can use 4.2 to show that B double prime D, B double prime is equal to B double prime B single prime. And since Schwabhauser 4.2 is MPE TGIF SCGR, um, in step 100, 5, 700, we could replace that C2 um, minus C4 equals C7 minus C9 with our versions of B double prime and B prime, namely E and F. And if we follow the original proof exactly, we would just substitute this as little e minus little e equals little e minus big E. But, but wait a minute here. Step D21 is necessary for state 800, and it has a really similar form. E minus big E equals something minus itself. And we know that equality commutes. If we just swap the order of line 700 and use E uh, little e minus big E equals E minus little e, then the symbol order will match exactly between them. So let's modify 700 just to use that order and then make it easier to match with step D21, then control U. Now this looks promising. Step 700 and step D21 seem to match well. So let's modify the D21 and append it with a sharp 700. That just means bang D21 colon colon 700. What does that mean? In MMJ2, that will replace step D21 with step 700, if that's possible. Then we'll do control U. We're getting closer. We've connected steps 700 and 800, but step 800 isn't connected to anything. Yet, yeah, step 800 prov proves that little e equals big E, and step D13 wants us to prove that little e exists in DIF implies E exists in DIF. If little e equals big E, then that would be the case. The trick you want here is EQELTRRD, which proves that if two things are equal, then if one thing is a member, then the other one is. Let's change D13 to D13 colon colon EQELTRRD and use control U. Step D40 is basically a restatement of step 800. So we'll tell MMJ2 to merge them. We'll say we'll change that D40 colon colon into D40 colon colon sharp 800, control U. Ah, okay, now what? 700 has many prerequisites, but we know overall that ABC is congruent with DEF, and in these steps, a prerequisite is that ABC is congruent to D little EF. We should be able to prove that in these steps, DEF is congruent to D little EF, which is good because in geometry, it's often helpful to prove that triples like triangles are congruent. We then use that fact to pr prove the corresponding legs are congruent. For example, DE congruent to D little e, um, FE congruent to F little e. So let's modify step D39. We'll prove that FE is equal to F little e and step 38 to prove DE is uh, equal to D little e, with the expectation that we'll be able to prove that from congruent triangles, control U. That simplified things, but we still have steps D38 and D39 unproven. We really need to prove that D little e f is congruent to DEF, given they're both congruent with ABC. The theorem for that is CGR 3TR, which is congruence for triples as transitive. So let's add before D38 a step 600 that uses CGR 3TR with the same precondition and the result that DEF, D little EF is congruent with DEF. Control U, modify using the geometry conventions, control U again. Okay, 
we know what to do for step D53 and D55. We want some C1, C3, C4 to be ABC. Let's replace and control U. Excellent. Now this one's easy. We have a congruence in re reverse order, so we just need to commute it. The fact that the commu congruence relationship is commutative is already proven in, in TRG CR, I'm sorry, TRG CGR COM. So let's try to use that directly by adding that after colon colon and pressing control U. Step D38 is still unproven. It's supposed to show that DE is congruent with D little e. But step 600 shows that DEF is congruent with D little EF. And once we have congruent triples, we can extract each congruent part using CGR3 simp1, CGR3 simp2, and CGR3 simp3. After looking at those options, let's modify step D38 to CGR3 simp1. Control U, simplify for geometry and use of DEF, and then control U again. Excellent. We're getting closer. However, we can't just use CGR3 simp2 here because that would produce the wrong order. That would produce EF is equal to little EF. We need to get the right answer and commute. So let's insert a new step above step D39. We'll label it 650 and use CGRE simp2 like this. Control U, geometry substitutions, control U. This looks good. Now, modify D step D39 so it uses our new step 650 by commuting both sides. A search for TGCGRCOM finds TGCGRCOMLR. Let's use that. We're all done with the main branch, but we never got around to finishing step D12. Let's do that now. As shown here, we need to prove that AC is congruent to DF. Since ABC is congruent to DEF, we were confident we'd be able to do that eventually. Now we need to do it. Given two congruent triples, we can extract congruences of each part using CGR3 simp1, simp2, simp3, and after comparing them, it's clear that we want CGR simp3. So let's just add before step D12 the following. A50, CGR3, simp3. After control U, we'll note that we'll be using ABC congruent to DEF, replace the usual geometry statements, and control U again. We're close. Step D12 can be proved from step 850 by commuting the congruence. After a brief lookup, we find that TGCGR COM LR is what we want. We'll change D12 to D12 colon 850 colon TGCGR COM LR and do control U. Fill in a few con geometry conventions and again press control U. It's proven. That's it. We've formally proven the claim. The next few slides show the proof as discussed in this presentation. In this presentation, the hype column lists the various steps, uh, previous steps used as hypotheses in that step. The ref column identifies the assertion, the theorem or axiom used in that step. And this is the proof as it was displayed on 2020-07-15. You can see the current version of the full proof here, which may be a little different than what I'm showing you here. Here's the theorem that we've discussed, its hypotheses and conclusion. Here's the final proof, first page of four, second page of four, third page of four, fourth page of four. In conclusion, this example used the automation provided by MMJ2. Now, we expect that Metamath tools will increasingly have better automation and that'll make the proof process even easier in the future. Uh, that said, I hope that this example will help you create your own formal proofs. And, and finally, my sincere thanks to Terry Arnaud for the original formalization used here. Thank you very much.